The Mystery of the Silk Umbrella When the children heard their mother yelling at the umbrella, they realized that something was seriously wrong. Amma never shouted at people, much less at objects. So both the children were very, very worried. Open up! Open you, you devilish monster! Is everything all right, Amma? Why are you both up so early? You were shouting with the umbrella, Amma. Do you want it open? Here, let me try it. Achoo, no! <laughs> Amma wants the umbrella to be open, not broken. And Amma, you know what happened? Arjun tried to fix the shower last night and the shower came out of his hand. I know you are going to feel bored and well off, but I have promised to make it up to you. I am going to. She got no further as she was interrupted by loud angry screaming, followed by a few thumbs and a volley of screams from Shanta's apartment. Run that you thief and that you bugler. Arjun runs out to see why his aunt was shocked. What happened, Shantata? Why were you shouting? He got no further as a teapot, half filled with tea, came whizzing out of the dim light and bounced off his head before it landed in a bush. Are you okay, Kamala? What on earth were you thinking to throw such a heavy copper teapot at poor Arjun? Thank God, you're all right. <sighs> I am so glad you are okay. Kamla have breakfast. Rupa, we deserve to be spoiled with a good breakfast. Besides, you have been acting weird lately. Acting weirdly? That's hilarious. Especially some, from someone who throws a copper teapot out of window. What will it be? Pano cakes? Traffic light dosa? Or breakfast? I didn't know you cooked. I thought you had all your meals at your office cafeteria. Besides, who has a fried rice for breakfast? I'll have a slice of toast. Ignoring her words, Shanta made three orders for pano cakes, and Amma polished off two pano cakes, and they were amazing. Tell me, Shanta, what were you thinking to throw such a heavy copper tea pot at poor Arjun Rupa? Hasn't it occurred to you? I was aiming someone else and not Arjun. Someone was peering at your window up to now. My window? Why would anyone want to peer through my window? Were they looking for Shankar who is away at a conference? You know Rupa, you are not only the one living in this apartment. Yes, me. There are some seriously evil forces waiting to steal something invaluable. The trio started googling and searched Shanta's apartment for invaluable items. They thought to themselves that everybody loved Shanta and no one would want to kill him. Why I didn't see the criminals? Was I living in, uh, under a rock then? As Shanta was explaining the morning sightings, Arjun and Divya interrupted her and told her about the silk umbrella that was refusing to open. She understood immediately and came up with a possible search. Got this umbrella from that costume shop, Jam Jam Costume Co. Don't they usually have many pieces of same co- Amma, why did we think of that? I'm sure they have another umbrella. I'm going down to bring my tea things from your bag. When she was searching for the teapot, she moved the branch aside and she froze as next to the copper teapot was a footprint. Next to the footprint was some was a small button with some sort of logo engraved on it. Ever since Shanta found the footprint and the button, her mind had been in a turmoil. She couldn't concentrate on anything. And she had just poured out the coffee in which she had absentmindedly stirred a spoonful of salt. Sipping fresh coffee, Shanta looked at the button she had just found in the garden. Shanta impulsively shows the button to the children. It didn't look like it has come from any of the clothes. It has some sort of logo engraved on it. It's a designer button. Yes. A very upmarket Italian designer button. Where did you get it from? Hmm, must have found it somewhere. Divya had guessed correctly. 
I don't think Santa Tai has any friends who wear designer clothes. Thought she does have friends with fried tomatoes and men who wear shawls like togas. And what about ladies who curl their hair into long ringlets with butter? Long curls look good, don't they? Shanta had a glazed expression on her face. All this talk about hair had set her thinking. She thought to herself that the man who stood out the who stood at the window had quite a mop of dark hair, whereas her enemy, Doctor Bambaram Jones, had had arranged his curly grey hair artfully over his bald pack. So perhaps it wasn't Doctor Bambaram Jones peering. Through the window after all, this was a good news indeed. For if an intruder was still on the prowl, it meant that the precious packet was still safe, safe in its hiding place. Shant- Shanta would have preferred to bring the packet home for safekeeping. It was a tiny, clear plastic packet, quite flat even where filled and sealed. But every time she came out of her office with this packet. She bumped into the person, into the person she was trying to avoid, Doctor Bambaram Jones. He was so desperate to get his hands on the packet that he even threatened to use his influence and have her sat from the job if she didn't hand it over to him. At the shop, thirteen-year-old Malli was looking thoughtfully at the umbrella Arjun and Divya had bought to her. She prodded it and traced with metal ribs under the silk with long slender fingers and declared, "I think this problem calls for my grandmother's cufflink this." Do you need a swing of cough syrup before you can open the umbrella? Not me. The umbrella does. Not a swig or even a sip. A drop. Anything more than a drop is a dosage for an elephant. Jin and Devya knew Mali only slightly, having met on their trips to Jam Jam when they visited the shop with their mother. Mali was usually around, either reading or practicing something new she was learning. Mali starts talking about the medicine. Patti calls it cough linkers, though it can be used for almost any problem: headaches, tummy aches, for curing nightmares, preventing snoring, ingrown toenails, all industry hinges. Well, since it's such a wonder medicine, it might work on the umbrella. But the silk should not be damaged or stained in any way. Will it stain the umbrella? Nah, nothing to worry about. Maybe just a small patch about this big. Not a problem at all. That's a problem actually. Amma was very particular that the silk must not be turned or stained. Just forty-six actually. About seven or eight are rented now. After some time, Arjun, Divya, and Mali talk about how Mali's business isn't going well. They also talk about the movie Amma was shooting in Bellore. Are you sure there's no other umbrella like this one? Because Amma has said that she had picked up enough uniforms for all the soldiers from the British Army, plus for all the sepoys. British Army, sepoys. Is your mother shooting a film about a sepoy mutiny of the eighteen fifty seven? Continued discussing about a mass film. Why don't we take this umbrella home and see what the one drop of conflict does will do? Home is just next room. Um, can I get my fortune read by Amu Jam Party while you get the umbrella repaired, Arjun? Yeah, money right. Good. You know, party doesn't tell fortune for free, not even for a newborn baby. Come on, Arjun, let's check whether cufflink dust is working on the umbrella. Arjun and Mali make a new batch of cufflink dust. When Arjun and Mali had gone to check whether party's cufflink dust would work on the umbrella, Vivya headed to the part of the shop where Ambujan party sat. Rupa's daughter, aren't you? With those curls hiding half of your face, I can see how much you look like your father. Um, yes. I hope you've got money for fortune to be told. I'd love to do it a discount for you, but these this fortune telling are going bad. That I will have to insist on payment. I'm afraid. I have ten rupees. 
टेन रुपीज दैट विल जस्ट एंटाइटल यू टू क्वार्टर सेशन कम सेट डाउन Rupa's daughter, aren't you? With those curls hiding half of your face, I can see how much you look like your. Mm, yes. I hope you got money for fortune to be told. I'd love to do it a discount for you, but these this fortune telling are going bad. That I will have to insist on payment. I'm afraid. I have ten rupees. Ten rupees. Hmm. That will just entitle you to quarter session. Come sit down. You wanted quarter session, don't you? This board game has magic powers. It's more than hundred years old. Now pick up these three stones. Make sure that the stones are calling you. Divya obeyed and did as Ambujam Pati said. Now throw all the three stones onto the board. And if your stones roll out of the board, my view of future gets. A- Divya threw the stones. Only one landed on the board. One landed on the swing. Another landed on the floor. Mm, be aware of a man who has some truth in him. And what this I see. A chase? I see you chasing a man and also being chased by someone. Ah, uh, good. There is a success too, but in a most unexpected area. Can I come and publish? Will I? Why don't you try Papa Money, the umbrella repair party? This umbrella that Rupa Akka has rented won't open. She needs it to open for the film. What shall we do now? Why don't you try Papa Money, the umbrella repair? Oh my god why didn't we think of that umbrella repair man seems good to bet how will we get hold of him that's a problem he roams around looking for work he never sits in one place how many set up his shop near the temple tank check there he decided that the children would go to the temple tank while party would make a new batch of cup like this before going malika Chores while Arjun and Divya waited outside for her. Arjun, <laughs> Amma, Arjun wants some umbrella to be. Why were you shouting, Shanta? Thai. Ah, run that you thief and that you bungler. The trio decided that Rupa would go to work while Arjun and Divya could would go to the umbrella. Can I have my fortune read by Ambujam Party while you get the umbrella repaired, Arjun?